is the story of a bad math student. We've all had that experience of being that student that just doesn't quite get it. For me, that subject was math. You guys know what I'm talking about? Did you have a subject area that you struggled with when you were in school? Maybe it wasn't math, maybe it was art, maybe it was PE. You're with me, right? At the time, it felt insurmountable. Like there was no way you could get over this challenge of, for me, learning math. But recently, I've discovered that there are five key elements that we can put into any subject area to help our students turn their struggles into successes. And they all start with the letter P. The first is to practice. It doesn't have to be a long time, because a little bit goes a long way. The second is to provide a process for your students to follow, a framework for them to work through as they're learning. The third is to give them a project or products for them to share their learning throughout their learning journey, to create artifacts that demonstrate what they're learning. The fourth is a purpose for what they're learning or a performance to share with a wider audience. And then the fifth is to play, to actually have fun and enjoy our learning on an everyday basis. I'm sharing these with you because I recently learned that I can be an awesome math student. And it totally surprised me. It all started with an authentic project that had a purpose, the kind that we as teachers often talk about providing for our students, but sometimes don't quite get there. This purpose allowed me to level up my math skills without even knowing it was happening. I decided I wanted to compete in a powerlifting competition. Now, for those of you that don't know me, just a few short years ago, my main physical activity would have been choosing between Netflix or Hulu. So the idea of competing in an athletic endeavor, let alone one with a weight class, was way out of my comfort zone. But I decided to give it a try anyway, and I registered for a competition in my home state of Connecticut, and I gave myself six months to prepare. During that time, I decided I wanted to cut 10 kilos of weight so that I could compete in the lighter weight class. That was going to be my biggest challenge, not to lose my strength while cutting weight. And I did it. In six months, I went from 65-ish kg to 55-ish kg. And at the same time, I added 10 kilos to my lifting total. During this time, I had no idea I was using any math at all. I was never even thinking about math. But in retrospect, I realized I learned quite a bit. For example, when I started this journey, my math was so bad that I actually struggled sometimes to calculate the weight of the barbells and the plates as I was lifting. I needed to lift 50 kilos, but I couldn't figure out how many plates that took. It got so complicated because then I started traveling a lot for work and I needed to switch between metric and imperial. So I decided I would make a spreadsheet, like totally geeked out, and put down a spreadsheet so I could convert between metric and, and imperial so I could save some time at the gym. That was just my kind of math interests. And then things started to shift and move and enter into physics and geometry and biology. And I started to learn about moment arms and force production and the structure of my body and how I could produce more force by having the barbell lower on my back. Of course, I didn't do this by myself. I have an awesome nutritionist that I work with, and I have a coach in Bangkok. But even more importantly, I have an online community of fellow powerlifters that I share my struggles and my successes with on a regular basis. Anytime I have a problem, I can share in my powerlifting community, and I can get responses immediately to turn those weaknesses into strengths. Seeing these people that are a little farther along their path, allowing them to be mentors and inspiration guides for me was so empowering for me as a learner. It's something I've talked about as a learning coach for 15 years, but finally I was seeing it in practice for my own personal passions. Honestly, I could talk about powerlifting all day. I'm so geeked out about it, I have my own powerlifting blog. But I will stop here, and I will bring it back to the five Ps. Taking it apart, 
those five P's for me started with my practice, my everyday going to the gym and training. My process was progressing through strength blocks over time, following a program. My products were the artifacts that I shared on Instagram and Facebook to document my journey. My purpose and my performance was that competition day. And every single day in the gym was play. I would have so much fun while I was there, I would literally lose track of time. This is just my personal example of following my passion. It's just one of many we can see online, all over the world, of people pursuing their dreams and learning how to become better humans. This happens naturally when it's something we're engaged in and we're passionate about. But if we can take those pieces apart and we can analyze them, we can bring them to any subject area and help our students be those empowered and engaged learners that we want them to be. Thinking about your subject area, can you take these five Ps and ignite that spark that's just waiting to be lit in that student in your classroom that doesn't quite get it yet and help turn all of us into awesome math students just like me? Thank you. Thank you.